We got enough water hose and got everything under it. Hey, once the top brush was down, it was out. But uh, I said I'd like to thank, say uh, this morning as I was sitting here and playing the bass and <coughs> I'll go, then after a while, the Holy Ghost got moved on Brother Bill over here and he began to dance. Mm -hmm. Then I began to watch it and it began to jump. Yeah. The fire began to just bounce all around this place. Uh -huh. And uh, and I thought, that's what it means when the when the spirit the, the wind of the spirit of God begins to blow yeah. on just a little fire, yeah. begins to kindle it, yeah. and then after a while it begins to just get everywhere. Uh -huh. And uh and I thought, not no wildfire, right. but the the fire of God, yeah. the spirit of God. And uh, and I thought I, I enjoyed that this morning, yeah. and I've enjoyed it tonight. Yeah, yeah. I feel like somebody's got some help. Um, like Sister Pauline, I don't know what Brother David's going through, but God does, yeah. right. and He can help us through whatever we're facing. Right. And uh, I'm going to turn your Bibles to the Book of Philippians, chapter three. And uh, got a couple things here I'm going to read. And uh, <coughs> I thought uh, coming upon a new year. And uh, as we do, we look back on our past years and we see a lot of things that we wish we could have done different. Uh, and then we look at a lot of things that we're glad we got accomplished. And, uh, and I thought I'd look on last year and it seemed like it was just a, a big blur. I mean, it seemed like everything just went so fast. Uh, there were got a lot of things going on. And uh, back in the first of the year, we started project there and we planned on having it going by the second quarter of the year and uh, here it is starting a new year and we're just now getting it going and uh, but I've all that push trying to get that done it seemed like everything was just a blur and uh, the other things that we do but uh, the main thing is I hope we kept God in the center of our year and if we didn't we've got a new year to do that amen but uh, book of Philippians chapter 3 and verse 10. Uh, <clears throat> Philippians 10 and 3, or 3 and 10, I'm sorry. <clears throat> that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made comfortable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which also I have apprehended of Christ Jesus. In verse 13 he says, Brethren, I count, my, count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth to those things which are before. I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Jesus Christ. Thank you for standing for the reading of the word. Uh, Paul said here, uh, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth under those things which are before. Right. Uh, and uh, I began to think about that. And uh, like I said, it had been the first day of the year. And uh, what's happened has happened. There's not a thing we can do about it. Uh, we can't go back. I mean, if you've wronged somebody, you can go back and correct that fix that uh, but uh, there's nothing in the past that I can I can overdo I can redo I can't do it but uh, and Paul said forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth into those things which are for before I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Jesus Christ yeah. and uh, and I thought if I could for a few moments tonight, my title is, I just simply title it, Press On. Come on. Uh, and I thought, uh, <coughs> it means a lot to, to press. Yes, sir. Uh, and uh, I thought we can read in the Bible of the, uh, the woman that had the issue of blood. The Bible says that she pressed her way uh -huh. 
to the Lord. I mean, she had to she to press. You've got to to work your way to get there. Right. And uh, and I thought uh, when we look at the will of God in our life and the direction that we know that God wants us to go, whether we realize that we've got to press to get right. there, because the enemy is going to do whatever he can right. to hinder us from getting from where we're at to where we need to be. Uh, and I thought uh, uh, we we've got to we, we there you know there, there's there's uh, a there's got to be some effort put forth if we're going to make it. And uh, and I want to I want to I want to press uh, uh, press on. Uh, there, there's a, there's a lot of ways that we can press and and press it on with with the truth. And I thought, but if we continue in the truth, uh, it is the key to uh, to bringing forth the blessings and the results of the harvest that we're so needing. I thought uh, the last couple of weeks, we've uh, or last few weeks, uh, I've been down here in Sunday school for a, a while now. I'm, uh, I was teaching the young adults up, upstairs, and and uh, we, you know, things have happened, and not so many young adults no more. And so I moved out here, and then we had all these young teenagers coming, and uh, these teenage boys, and Sister Kathy wanted me to come back and begin to help her so be in the class with her. I'm not being much help, but I'm in there with her. And, and uh, uh, but uh, uh, but this morning when we was back down, we only had uh, uh, two two students again this morning. But uh, uh, but but as I begin to think about that, and I thought I'm looking forward to a continuation yes, of what we've got. Yes, uh, I'm looking forward to a continuation, and and I thought uh, uh, and I thought uh, and I'm looking forward to that harvest. Uh -huh. And uh, and I thought the way that we're going to get that is the way it was this morning. Uh, and, and I thought, <coughs> you know, when Colin, uh, whenever, you know, there's nothing that does my heart any greater than seeing the Spirit of God move on him. Uh, and I thought, uh, as I began to sit there and look at him in the morning, begin to think about his dad, whenever the, uh, just a child, and the Spirit of the Lord began to move on him and begin to work with him. And, and, uh, and I thought, and then how the enemy had come in and throw that roadblock there and that hindrance there. And, and I thought, uh, uh, I can't go back and redo a lot of things there. But I thought it's the things that are before me that we're reaching for. Uh, it's the direction of things that we know that are ahead that we've got to continue on for. We've got to press toward that. And, and I thought by pressing in the truth, I thought uh, John 8 32 says, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And all there's nothing more freer than knowing the truth. And, and I thought uh, uh, my papa used to tell me all the time, uh, if you ever tell the truth, you don't have to rethink your story. I thought because the truth is always going to be the same, Brother Ronnie. I thought, but it's when you begin to not tell the truth that you've got to continue to rethink your story uh, to make sure that you're you're getting everything covered up like it's supposed to be. And, and I thought you don't have to rehearse the truth. Uh, the truth is there. And I thought the, uh, when, when we think about the truth of God, I thought uh, uh, it, it's, it's liberating. To know the truth of God. Uh, it, it's refreshing, if you would, to know the truth of God. And although there is, there's so many things out here in this world uh, that people are relying upon, people are dependent upon, people are grasping a hold of, uh, for a, uh, like Sister Kathy said a while ago, for mere entertainment in their life. But I thought knowing the truth of God, that's all we need. Well, you're sure there's things that we all like to do. Uh, things that we enjoy, maybe go fishing or, or, or go on a little vacation occasionally, whatever it is. And, and there's nothing wrong with that as long as our priority is in the work of God. Right. And knowing that truth of God. Yeah. Pressing forward to the will of God. Right. And I walked up <coughs> by pressing through those with that truth. Then we're able to press through the hardships and have victory in our life. I thought each one of us tonight, if I ask us uh, to, to share a testimony of hardships that we've went through in our life, no doubt every one of us could stand up tonight and testify of something that God has brought us through. Yes, sir. Every one of us here. Yes, sir. Uh, and uh, uh, some of them may be, I mean, some things that God has brought you through. Uh, I may look and I may wonder, Lord, how in the world do they make it through those things? Uh, how were they able to stand? And I thought, but the same God that brought me through my problems brought you through your problems. And I thought, uh, uh, and it's, and it, by, by holding on to the victory of God, we're able to press through 
those uh, uh, difficult and those hard times. I thought uh, the uh, uh, Second Timothy two and three says, "Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ." And I thought, uh, uh, and I thought it, through through that we we're able to press through. Uh, and I thought, like I said, the cat the past couple years has brought a lot of hardships upon people. Yeah, I thought, uh, uh, but I thought we continue to press on. Yeah. Uh, we begin, uh, we begin, uh, continue to endure these things uh, that the enemy has thrown at us. And I thought by that we have become overcomers right. through Christ Jesus. Right. And I thought, uh, I, I want to be an overcomer tonight. I want to be one that's willing to continue to press. Right. I thought, uh, there's a, uh, uh, I've said it before, there's, there's, I've always been one of those that if I had a task before me, then I, I got into it to make sure that I got it done to the best of my ability. Yeah. Uh, and I thought there's, there's been, you know, <clears throat> there's things that, uh, that I've encountered that, that I, that I've never done before. Uh, you know, and, uh, <clears throat> I guess the, the, the biggest thing that, that we encounter is as man, uh, the first thing that we encounter we've never faced before is becoming a husband. And you say, well, what, you know, I'm not being comical tonight, but I thought that's something that we have to, we have to work at, right. to be good at. And I, mean, I can't say that I've been the best one, but, I, but I've tried my best to be a godly husband. Right. And I thought then after that we have, we have children, and then we have uh, a greater task uh, of becoming a father. Right. Uh, 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 someone that a child can look up to. Uh, to be in leadership, and and I thought uh, uh, by doing that, then uh, we we continue uh, to press through and and do things in the will of God. Uh, and I thought, but then there, there's other things. Once we be, uh, take those steps in life that uh, uh, that that become at us uh, uh, by, by by becoming a husband and becoming a, a father, we find ourselves becoming a plumber. We find ourselves becoming a carpenter. We find ourselves becoming a mechanic. Uh, all these things become a snowball in on us. Because we ain't got the money to uh, pay somebody else to do it, Brother Rodney. And I thought, uh, uh, you know, I'm not being, like I said, I'm not being comical, but these are the things of life that we deal with every day. And I thought we just take them for granted. But I thought it's through the faith, of the, the help of God, that we're able to overcome these things. And I thought these are just the simple things of life. But then it's those hardships that begin to come up on us. And we begin to, we can trust God to get us through those things. But I thought we've got to press through. For the mark of the prize of the high calling, and I thought we we've got to we've got to press through, and we got to forget those things that are behind us. I thought as we come up in this new year, I thought uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, like I said, a lot of people make resolutions, and and I, and I don't make New Year's resolutions uh, because most time they they just fail. I read a thing today, uh, a guy said I've made a New Year's New Year's resolution this year that I can keep. I plan on eating more and exercising less, and uh, and so uh, you know that's that's about as uh, as wise as you can get, and uh, because it's usually the other way around that we we set that going and we can't keep it. Uh, but I want to, uh, but but looking on to a new year, we look and we say, what more can I do for God? Uh -huh. And uh, referring back to the uh, to the uh, illustration I've used before, of President Kennedy. The, the time in his inaugurational speech and, and he said ask not what my country can do for me but what can I do for my country yeah. and I thought it's ask not what uh, uh, God can do for me but what can I do for God right. I thought stand up and, and be the, the, the vessel that God wants to use yeah. and I thought it means a lot to be a willing vessel oh, yeah. I thought, you know uh, <clears throat> I don't know why this came to my mind but but uh, you know, there's there's things at the house that uh, uh, that that you can use to, to put things in, and uh, and it can be a vessel, and it can use be used to hold a lot of things. And uh, I thought uh, I make barbecue sauce, and uh, uh, we we make it sometimes. And and if we we want to take it off the stove hot, if we're making it ahead of time, we're not going to use it. And I can pour that in a glass jar. Uh -huh. But if I'm going to use it, then I've got a little squeeze bottle that I put that in. And I thought, uh, uh, it's the same barbecue sauce that's in the jar. And, uh, but I thought if I'm cooking that and it's hot, Brother David, then I'm not going to grab that plastic squeeze bottle and pour that hot barbecue sauce in that, in that, that squeeze bottle. 
And, and I've got one there that it was a bit too hot when I put it in there. And you can tell because it began to disform it. And, and I thought, uh, uh, but, but when we are the vessel that God wants us to be, that he's going to pour in us exactly what we're needing, that we can be used for him. And I thought, uh, I want to be used for God. I don't, I don't want to be, I don't want to find myself coming up against a hard place and not standing for what it needs to be. I remember as just a child, <coughs> we went out here to the, uh, we were in school. We went on a field trip out here to the uh, the, uh, the pottery. And uh, we was going through there. And, and uh, you know, and that, that pottery, the potter, he goes out back and, and uh, he just gets him a shovel and he digs into that clay and he brings it in. And it's just, just clay. But he begins to work with it. And, uh, and, 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 you know, he makes a beautiful vessel out of that. But, uh, you know, then he's got a, a kiln there and, and a big oven. And uh, he took us out back and he showed us a pile of broken pottery there that didn't make it through the kiln. Right. It had an air bubble in it or something in it that caused it to break as he was uh, putting it under the pressure. And I thought, I don't want to break under the pressure of God wow. that, and, 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 and under the pressures of this world right. that I can't be used for God. Right. Let me rephrase that. I thought because we're not going to break under the pressure of God, but it's the pressures that this world puts on us. If we're not where we need to be with God, that we will break because we're not the vessel that we need to be. And I thought, uh, uh, and I thought we need to press on in sound doctrine. I thought Second Timothy four and three says, "For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears." I thought we are seeing more of that today than ever before. I thought uh, uh, you you turn on the radio, and uh, and I thought uh, if you're like me, if I'm in the car, I've got the radio on, and uh, I thought you turn it on, and and there's a lot of preachers on there that are that uh, at one time had stood for the same thing we're standing for, and I thought, but but if you listen to their 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 preaching and their as they begin to preach, and and I thought you you feel that emptiness in it uh, as they begin to uh, to preach and, and they'll preach on uh, and talk about how holy they are and, and the truth of holiness and they bring it up to that certain point and then they stop there and and, uh, and, I thought, uh, and then you, you see how they have fallen so far away from God and I thought we're living in an age when there is so much of this false doctrine and, and I thought uh, like I said people want their ears tickled uh, and I thought uh, uh, the devil wants them to believe these lies. And, and I thought, uh, I read a little thing today. So once the devil was walking along with one of his cohorts, and they saw a man of them, uh, ahead of them pick up something shiny. And his cohort looked at the devil and said, what did he find? And the devil looked back and said, oh, he found a piece of truth. And the cohort replied to the devil, doesn't that bother you that he's found the truth? The devil says, oh no, that doesn't bother me because I'm going to teach him uh, 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 I'm going to teach him to make a religion out of it. And I thought the enemy don't care for us having a little bit of the truth. But I thought uh, he, he gets bothered when we begin to stand on the whole truth. The unadulterated truth, the true word of God. And I thought uh, I, I, want to, I want to stand for the true holiness of God. I want to be able to press on for the things of God. Yeah. And I thought uh, <coughs> pressing brings blessedness. Right. And I thought uh, if we continue to press on with God, I thought we'll find ourselves uh, uh, gaining more and more ground Amen. with God. I thought uh, the Greeks uh, are, I guess, probably one of the first ever have the Olympic Games and, and their, their races that they've done and, and that's why uh, Paul referred to the race and the finish in the race and, and uh, but I thought uh, the Greeks had a race in their Olympic Games that was unique and I thought the winner was not the first one to finish the race the winner was the first one who finished with his torch still lit and I thought it means a lot to run. 
And uh, I thought, but we don't want to run so fast that we blow out a fire. I thought we want to keep the fire burning. And I thought the, the object of the goal was to finish with, excuse me, to finish with the fire. And I thought uh, as we head into this new year, and I thought we're going to face, no doubt we're going to face some opposition. But I thought I feel like that we can face this, this new year with victory. I thought as I begin to think about that today, I thought about the night we was over here at church and, and uh, in the old building several years ago. And we were sitting there, the service hadn't even started yet. And uh, some of you may remember over the hall that came over there some and uh, faced a lot of things in his life that there were some things he just never could just quite grasp a hold of. And, uh, but we were sitting here one night and, and uh, uh, like I said, we were just talking amongst ourselves. The service hadn't started. All of a sudden, Brother Hall stood up and he hollered, Victory! And, uh, and then he said that uh, he wanted more than victory in his life. He wanted a triumph. Yeah. And I thought, it, you know, you think of victory, you think, man, a victory is going all the way. But he said a victory is when you knock the enemy down. Uh -huh. But a triumph is when you've got your foot on the neck of the enemy. And, uh, and I thought I never have forgot that. I was just in my, probably my early 20s uh, that when that happened. But I thought throughout a lot of things in my life, I've looked back and, and a lot of difficulties, Brother Rodney. And, and, I, and I thought I faced them and I thought there's been a few times that, that I got victory over. But I thought when we get victory over them, if we're not careful, we let the enemy back up. But I thought there's been a few things that I've triumphed over. That I've got the enemy down and I put my foot on the enemy's neck. And I thought as we face a new year, I thought how many want some triumphs? I want some triumphs in my life. I thought I want to be able to put my foot on the neck of the enemy. I thought David went just a little bit further than that with Goliath. I thought he knocked the, Goliath, knocked the giant down with the rock and the sling and the rock. But I thought then he went and he took that giant sword and he got a triumph. Amen. He took his head off. Uh -huh. I thought, I'm going to take the head off the enemy tonight. I thought, I don't want to give him no grounds to be continuing fighting me with. I thought, we, yeah, we'll face some things. But I thought we can press on toward the mark of the prize of the high calling. I thought as they come and get us a song tonight. Oh, let's press on. Let's continue to press. Let's go forward. I thought, let's expect a greater harvest. I thought, you know, I don't guard much. No more. Uh, I thought the last time I put out a garden, the coons and the deers and the, and the groundhogs got way more of it than I did. And, and I just give it up. Uh, I told Sister Kathy, I said, there ain't no need fighting it. Uh, between the, the groundhogs and that wildlife and then the weeds. I mean, it just, it just took over. And uh, so, I, so I gave it up. But I thought not one time did I ever put out a garden that I didn't expect a harvest of some time. I thought we was down David just uh, Friday and we was burning all that brush pile and we had it piled up where he used to have a garden. And uh, I moved him a little garden spot last year and we burned all that off. And I said, son, next year you've got a good spot for a garden. After we burnt this ground and put all this nitrogen back in, I said, That's, you're going to have a good spot. But I thought there's still got to be some work done before he put out a garden next year. We pushed up a bunch of stumps and uh, rock clods and everything else. We got to get all that cleared up. And I thought we've got to work in order to have that harvest. But the harvest is so good. The harvest is so plentiful. And I thought I'm expecting it. Take us a song tonight. Let's pray.